What's up fellow Sambarians? Today I was gonna make a little video on the super, super basic information about your sandbar. Um, I had somebody in the OK Garage Facebook group uh, make a suggestion that I do a video on just like where stuff's located, checking fluids, and stuff that's just, you know, to me is like, what? <laughs> but if you're new to owning a sandbar or importing a sandbar or, you know, interested in getting a sandbar, um, this video is just really more geared towards you, um, which makes sense because I've seen people ask questions that I'm just like, you know, kind of silly, but if you've never had one before, you know, it's a, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty, you know, legit question to ask. Like, where is uh, windshield wiper fluid go? I mean, stuff is just kind of uh, crammed into small spaces on these uh, K cars because they're small, obviously. So Matt uh, had asked me on the Facebook group, OK Garage, um, check it out if you haven't already. Kind of just do updates all the time. Parts I'm getting in, parts I you know, got, and if you need anything, you can reach out, all that good stuff. I'm here to help you. But um, he owns uh, Melon Graphics, I think it is. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, cool dude, does uh, replicas of your decals and stuff on your sandbars, and I think Honda Acties as well. So if you're in the market for uh, decals for that, um, check out his little Etsy store. Um, I do more digitally printed stuff um, on the side and uh, I just trying to keep up with all this stuff. It, it's getting a little hectic, but uh, if you ask, I'll, I'll try to get to it. But anyways, <clears throat> let's go over the basics on these things. Cause he was like, you know, just do a basic video on all that stuff. And I mean, it makes sense. So that's what we're gonna do. If you got one coming and you just, you know, need a little information to help you out, let's, uh, let's go over everything and the locations and all that to kind of, you know, uh, clear the air on, you know, all that stuff. So obviously I have my truck out here, <clears throat> which is a KS. If you're not familiar with the versions, KS3 or KS4 stands for um, the truck. KS3 is two wheel drive. KS4 is a four wheel drive. And then you have your KV, which is, you know, your vans and the KV3 or KV4, you know, same deal. KV3 is two-wheel drive, KV4 is um, four-wheel drive. So I have my KV4 and my KS4 out here right now. And we're gonna go over the different locations because a van is slightly different than the truck just because of placement um, of certain things and can get a little confusing. So let's uh, start with the van and I'll kinda just give you a real quick walkthrough. Um, try not to lose your attention because I talk too much. But let's start, let's start with the van. Okay, so all, obviously all the sandbars, the motors are in the back. Um, I know, I think Honda Acties are a little different. The Honda Acti van's motor is in the back. And then I think the trucks are uh, more up front. I could be wrong. I'm getting the Acti van coming, so I'm going to have way more knowledge on those um, pretty soon. And some, obviously a lot more how-tos on working on your Acti, so I'm super stoked on that. But um, right now, all my knowledge is focused on sandbars because obviously I got them. So again, all the motors on sandbars are in the back. It doesn't matter if it's a Domingo or a Diaz or your sandbar truck, they're all in the back. Um, so this is the van. So stuff is gonna be slightly different. <clears throat> the van coolant overflow tank is in the back the truck it's not in the back so this this guy right here is just your like your burp bottle or your overflow so um i'm actually i had a, a guy ask for the coolant caps i have those on order so i'll have those pretty soon if you're missing a coolant cap or it's broken um but anyways your coolant cap your coolant reservoir is located on in the back on the driver's side and <clears throat> If you need to check your oil, your dipstick is to the right of your timing cover. 
So let's say you just got your truck and you're, you know, you need to check stuff. Um, your dipstick is right here. These things hold about three quarts of oil. So if it is low, don't, don't add a lot, just a little bit at a time because you'll overfill it real quickly. Um, so that's, that's one thing you're going to want to check. And it's always good to take a look at your timing belt. Now, maybe if they serviced it in Japan before they had it sent over, you know, that's peace of mind. But if you don't know anything about it, previous owner didn't say anything, um, it's very easy to check your timing belt. There's four 10 millimeter bolts on the side of the cover. Just take those off and take a look at your belt. Um, it's good to replace them if it hasn't, because it's 25 years old plus, so it's really old or if it's at 100,000 kilometers or more, uh, they're supposed to be replaced at 100,000 kilometers. So if it's a fresh, if it's a freshie, you might as well just change that um, timing belt, which I sell those kits and stuff as well. But you can take the four bolts off, take a look, see how, see what the belt's looking like. It is a non, non-interference engine, which is nice. So your uh, pistons aren't gonna make out with your your valves if the belt breaks but uh you will be stranded obviously it's not gonna run so there's four bolts on that take the cover off take a look see how see how things are looking obviously and that's another thing you'll notice i'm naked back here not me physically but my van is naked there's no bumper on i took the bumper off my van it's very easy to um open the bumper on the van there's a little black this up so right here towards the center um, right here actually if you look inside um, above just right of the latch to your um, door hatch there's a black little black lever and that's what you're gonna want to hit and you know release the bumper cover so you'll pull on it after it's released you're gonna want to lift up it's it it lifts up and then it comes out so don't try yanking on it because it's not going to come out so you pull it out it comes out a couple inches then pull up on the bumper and then lower it don't sit there and gorilla yank that thing because you're just going to mess it up but lift up pull down and now your bumper uh, cover your bumper engine cover is now open so i should have started with that but your little black lever is right here so that will release that and then now you can take a look at everything that's going on back here. I took it off because I'm running an exhaust, uh, it won't fit. Plus these things get really, really hot back here and it just allows a lot more airflow to cool things down. Um, you do whatever you wanna do. Um, I prefer it off. I think it looks pretty cool if you're doing, you know, a little setup back here with the valve cover. Um, but let's get back. <laughs> These are your spark plugs. So obviously it's a four cylinder. Your four little spark plugs are right here. Super easy. I got videos on how to replace those if you need to replace them. Um, your exhaust is gonna be right here in this pocket. So right behind my heart, um, there's your exhaust muffler setup. And um, that's just all pretty basic. If it's leaking and you got a fat exhaust leak, it's good to get it fixed or get a new one. But um, that's that's not uh, it's not rare that that happens because they are pretty rusty when they come from Japan. Um, I don't have a pair. I don't have a set of screwdrivers with me right now, but if you're looking to get into like your air box or something to change the air filter, um, your engine cover is underneath the carpet back here. So you're just going to lift up your carpet, and then your engine cover is held with four Phillip head screws. And then you'll take that engine cover off and then you'll notice inside there's your air box and it's just held with four clips so you can open that up take a look at how dirty it is and how filled up with oil it probably is as well um, as you can see right here i have an oil can um, or you just run a breather on the top of your valve cover you do whatever you want to do but that's what i that's what i do to try to eliminate oil from getting in the air box um, i again i have videos on that as well cleaning the air box getting to it and all that stuff um, if it's um, you know if you need a little more information about that this is just where stuff is really located kind of a video so 
underneath your carpet is your engine cover take that thing off and you have access to the top of your engine and the only thing you really need to look at in there is your air box um, there's not a whole lot of other things to check other than um, you take that off take a look at your accessory belt see how bad the belt is if it's supercharged take a look at your supercharger belt see if how that's looking um, obviously it's like a normal car if the belts frayed or squealing um, cracking replace it don't don't risk it it's not worth it belts are super cheap just get a new one so <clears throat> that uh, that's the engine side um, and then up here on the vans you have your uh, engine your engine your coolant uh, radiator cap fill so this is where you fill uh, radiator fluid on the vans which is different than the truck so I'll get to the truck but that's what this cap is for back here and then on this side you do have a, a rear washer uh, wiper on the van so here is the cap to put in more washer fluid um, um, for the back only not the front uh, let's see what else could we go over on the back um, yeah I think that pretty much does it for the back let's move around okay so obviously another thing you want to be checking uh, with your new truck or van um, and this is the same for both the truck and van uh, your brake fluid so your brake fluid reservoir is right to the uh, right of your your dash your cluster instrument cluster so if you pop this thing off there is your uh, brake fluid reservoir and it's got the marks on it just like any other car telling you high low um, I'm not really gonna get into that because I have my uh, tachometer cables running through there and I don't want to have to split it but you just take that off and take a look at your brake fluid see the color you know if it needs to be changed or not you're looking for a, a more of a clear color than the honey color because once you start getting darker it's obviously getting burnt and uh, it's getting close um, to change it which is another thing I'm going to do a, a video on uh, kind of flushing the brake fluid system so you get some new brake fluid in there, but that's another day. Just gotta find some time to do that. So that's where your uh, brake fluid um, is gonna go. Uh, let's see. So you're probably also wondering uh, if yours is a KS4 or a KV4, this button here on the top of your um, shift knob is your, uh, your four wheel drive. If it's not all wheel drive already, um, this is your four-wheel drive uh, engage button. Um, I do not, I do not know the rules on when to hit it and uh, when to turn it off. Um, but I will tell you, I do it personally when uh, I'm not moving because I just I'm not sure. I mean, maybe somebody can correct me, but. Uh, I don't want to engage it when I'm moving because I'm just afraid it's going to hit a gear or something and miss it. I'm not sure. So I usually stop, engage it, and then go. But when you do turn, when you disengage four-wheel drive, if you're rolling, you may hear a loud clunk. And I think that's kind of normal because it's releasing at a weird spot. So what I've noticed, what I do is I'll come to a complete stop and then disengage the four-wheel drive and it usually uh, won't make a loud clunking noise. So that's just something to be aware of when you're driving. I try not to engage four-wheel drive until I'm stopped and then disengage it when I'm stopped again. Um, again, I don't know. I've never had a four-wheel drive until I've owned one of these, so I'm not really entirely sure what the rules are, but I feel like the less noise it makes, <laughs> probably the healthier it's gonna be. So yeah uh there's your four wheel drive down there and it will pop up on your dash saying that it is engaged if it doesn't engage then that light's not going to turn on um and then there could be something wrong with a vacuum that's um not 
it's leaking and it's not engaging it. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, obviously your dome light. That's pretty basic. Let's go to the other side of the van. This video is actually a little bit uh, harder than I thought it was going to be. I'm trying to point everything out that I already know that someone else may not know. So, underneath your passenger seat, which I got some goodies to send to, to, send to some friends in Japan. Uh, since they, they help me get parts all the time. Gummy taco. Those are amazing, by the way. If you have gummy tacos, pick them up. Um... But underneath the passenger seat on the van, let's see if I can set this down. Okay, I gotta try to do this while holding up the camera because it's too floppy over here. Um, underneath your passenger seat on the van, on the van only, um, there are a couple clips. Well, first you lift up the carpet it's just held by little buttons. And carefully, carefully pull those up. Try to get underneath the button if you will, if you can, because they can, uh, those buttons will break. So once you get the buttons popped up and your carpet's up, um, there's a couple, uh, couple clamps holding the, the seat. So you're going to want to lift those clamps up and then your seat's actually going to fold back just like that. And you'll see underneath there, you got your little stash, your secret stash. I'm just kidding. It's not a secret stash. Although who knows, maybe you'll find some secret stuff hidden in there. Uh, you'll take, you'll take that clamp off of that cover and pull it off. And that on the van only is where your battery is going to be located. Right there. That's your JDM battery. Um, very hard to replace those in America, so try to uh, treat that battery with as much respect as possible because you'll notice the pencil, pencil posts and the wiring is backwards, so it's just a little difficult to replace them with American batteries without doing some, um, some finagling. But that's where your battery is underneath the passenger seat. I showed you how to lift it up. And there, right here, there's your cool, uh, coolant. That's your uh, washer fluid reservoir for the front windshield. So that's where you add fluid. Um, that one's a little, a little more tricky to get fluid into because it's kind of a funky spot. So I use a little funnel because I don't want to spill washer fluid all over my battery and all the stuff down in there. Um, but yeah, that's where your washer fluid is and your battery on the van or your KV. So we'll put that back. And there's some other videos online. Uh, Larry, or yeah, Larry, um, he was like interviewed by, uh, man, I can't remember the name of it. I'll see if I can find it. But he kind of went over more detailed uh, of stuff in the vans, like seats and all that good stuff. Um, that would be a good video to check out. It's got a picture of him being interviewed in front of a white sandbar van. So if you see that thumbnail come up, um, check it out. He kind of shows you, like I said, the cool little features of the van. Um, put that back carefully clip those back in there and what's cool about the vans is the van actually has a rear heater so there's a button on your little uh, e-brake center console there that'll turn on the rear heater for anybody who's turning into popsicles in the back seat um, obviously here's your um, glove box um, We went over coolant, we went over windshield wiper fluid, we went over oil, we went over brake fluid. Um, I think that's pretty much the basics of the van without getting into detail of everything else. 
just kind of stuff that you need to know. Oh, also forgot. So, if you'll notice on the uh, passenger side, that's your fuel flap, okay? You're probably looking at it going, how the heck do I open it? Um, so there's actually a release button right below your shifter. Listen. Someone got excited. <laughs> um, that thing will pop open. So I actually, I had to replace that mechanism because it broke and it wasn't latching. So it wasn't holding on to the door um, door flap anymore. So if yours is the same way, I have a video on how to replace it and I sell the locking mechanism. Um, so that's just like your typical car where you flip, flip the little lever and pops open. Um, but the, some trucks are, uh, have a tumbler, a little key, a lock key tumbler. My KS4 doesn't, but my JA version, which is like the cheaper version, that one you just use a key to unlock. Um, that's pretty basic. But if you're looking for the lever to pop your uh, gas flap, it's underneath your shifter on the mounted on the in like where the carpet goes um and i did a little video on flare where the flare is and all that stuff you can check out my other videos for that that fun that fun stuff um i think that's it we'll move to the truck and then if anything comes to mind we'll go back okay so the truck the truck is going to be truck is going to be slightly different um so the battery on the van was located underneath the passenger seat the battery on the truck is located behind this guy the battery cover which i usually actually i've never seen a sandbar that came from japan with a battery cover um usually it's uh it's open sometimes they have battery covers but um i sell those as well if you want to cover it but your battery is back in, back in here as well. So that's where your battery is to jump it or whatever you got to do. Um, this cover is just held on by a, I think a 12 millimeter bolt. You just pop it off and then um, yeah, it just kind of, you just pull off the battery cover. So that's where your battery is. Let's go to the back. I'm just gonna crawl over here crawl along with me in the trenches um so if you're wondering how to get the uh so the cover on the van i showed you had a black little little toggle switch if you will and you hit that and lowers it and then you lift up and then pull down uh on the truck though the truck's different it just has an engine cover so you'll see that there's a keyhole um, it does not have to be a key. It can be anything, a screwdriver, um, your girlfriend's hair pins, whatever you find that's hard enough to put in there and turn. So there you go. That just opens up with the key, you just turn it. And this is the same style as the locking gas cap, same same concept although you do have to have a key um with the locking gas cap that fits the key with your ignition i don't think you can just use a screwdriver on the gas cap the engine however it doesn't matter um so on the trucks whoa you'll notice here there's nothing here this is where the coolant reservoir is on the van well the coolant reservoir is in a different location on the truck so back here same concept you got your oil dipstick, check your oil. You got your timing cover, take that off. Check out your timing belt. Um, here's my, so here's what I was talking about. If you're not running an oil catch can, you can see the uh, breather. This is just keeps oil from going into the uh, air box, which on the truck, there's your cover, which is the same exact design as the van got the four Phillips heads that pops off and then you get access to the top of the motor so super easy to work on these engines super super easy um, and so here's a good representation of what your exhaust is gonna look like where it is um, like I said the van is does not have it because I took it off um, 
yeah that's pretty much uh all the stuff back here if your lights are burned out those are just held on by four screws and you just pull those covers off um and then you can get to the bulbs underneath it these covers just um kind of lay on top of each other so you'll put uh you'll put the red one on first and then i think the orange one goes on top of it and they just kind of sandwich um you'll know if you take it off which uh which order they go back on also take a look here there's your motor mount looks like a little little rubber brick take a look see and see how uh that's looking because those are usually ripped this one's starting to rip and they get really droopy and they'll actually start to sit on the part of the frame back here so those are always good to replace i have a video on that as well if you need to replace that um motor mount but we'll close this back up this is obviously your license plate light and then here's your reverse light so that's an easy fix if the bulb is out or whatever um that's your one reverse light and you'll see right up here that guy that is not a third brake light that is a bed light so you'll see right here i'll show you close up that's a button so when you have your your truck turned on uh, accessory not running like you can't just use it uh, with the car not with the key not turned you actually have to have the key turned for that light to work so if you're pulling on it and it's not working and your key's not on that's why you got to turn your key on uh, otherwise yes it will not work and so the beds too the beds are kind of cool i'll show you um the little feature with the beds if you're getting the truck and not sure how those work so those panels actually um come off let's see I'll obviously release them and then you'll take your uh, gate chain take the gate chain off and these come down and then you can actually slide them forward. I don't want to slide it forward because I don't want to scratch anything because I don't need to take it off. But if you slide that thing forward, they'll come off the hinges. And then now you have a big old flat bed because you can take all the panels off. So I'm going to put the... And then this way, if you lower this one... those panicked a little bit so you release just the back one and then that will come down or if you need more room back here undo the chains and that thing will come all the way down and you got and you can flip all these down and then you just got a big old flat bed basically so that's kind of a cool feature with the truck and they uh, carry up to 350 kilograms, which is like 770 pounds, I think it is. So you could probably you could probably carry a couple couple bodies back here. <laughs> so we'll latch those back up. And you're probably wondering why these are black. I painted them. They don't typically come black. At least I don't think they come black. So let's move along here. Okay, so I showed you on the van. Come down here. I won't bite. Keep coming. Keep on coming. There you go. Um, you'll notice right here is your coolant, your coolant reservoir. There's the cap. So um, obviously you're gonna want to check that. Uh, make sure you're sitting on. Um, sitting in between the low and the high mark um those are again super easy they're just right there on the side of the truck if they're cracked or broken or you're missing just the cap or something i do sell just the caps or the entire reservoir and if you can't see in it uh take like your flashlight or your phone and slip it in between it uh the back in the bottle with your flashlight on and you can see where the level is with the coolant it's a cool little trick can't really get back behind the crack very well but your phone will kind of poke in there with the flashlight on 
and I gotta kind of hurry, my phone's gonna die. So that's where your coolant reservoir is. Um, obviously on the truck, same deal with your brake reservoir. Just pop that cap off the cover and you'll get to your brake reservoir. On the seats on the driver's side, slide forward and back. That's it, it doesn't move any other location other than front and back. And behind your front, the driver's seat is your jack and your uh, crank for the jack. Um, kind of kind of pokes in to the side here so that's there this is an actual vent it allows air to come in through the side here so um don't cover that thing up there's actually it's like a gill slit there's gill slits in that thing um let's see let's go to the other side okay so this is the difference between the truck and the van. So the truck just lifts up. No clips, nothing. But what's cool about the passenger side is the, the seat comes down on this side. There's a little clip, boink. And there's usually like a little bucket back there. On my JA version, there's a bucket and it's got like, you can store stuff in it. You can see the old mounting mounting holes on this one so i gotta try to find a bucket on yahoo auctions but this lifts up okay and this is where you're gonna get to uh this is where you're gonna get to your now your radiator so there there whoop, there's your radiator right right there so that's where your uh you check your radiator and you fill it up right there and then obviously you check your burp or your overflow um, after that has been topped off so that's where the coolant goes on this on the trucks only and then like the truck and the van your windshield washer fluid is also down there as well um but i think that's pretty much it i mean Check your brake fluids, you check your coolant levels, you check your oil. I showed you where our, all those spots are at. Um, a four wheel drive button, stuff like that. I mean, uh, it's super basic, so it's hard for me to figure out what, what to point out. Um, but if I miss anything, you know, comment and I can answer some questions if you're still a little slightly confused. But yeah, hopefully that was helpful, guys. Cool, take it easy. See you uh, on the next video, hopefully soon. All right.